healing. Those who need a, a miracle, God, that God, you'd make a way for them financially, Lord. Those who God need got a loved one that seems too far gone to be saved, that they can be saved in the name of Jesus. God, every situation we bring to you today, for we know our God is a great big God. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. You know, God is infinite, all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-capable. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing restricting God from doing His divine purpose. I want you to know something this morning. Despite the fact that God is all-powerful, almighty, omnipotent, it's a fancy word, sometimes we limit God. Sometimes you and I, we limit God, and God is not to be limited because God is unlimited, all-powerful, almighty, able to do anything and everything, and he does all things well. But I want you to know this morning, I want to look at some passages with you this morning to show you that it's an anti-biblical point of view to think that God cannot do all things. And I want you to look at with me this morning. I want you to receive God's unlimited miracle in your life this morning. That there is nothing too hard for God. If you came into this house this morning looking for a miracle. If you came here looking for God to move on your behalf. I'm here this morning. I've been praying and seeking God's face for two weeks for this service. And I believe God is going to meet us here today and do mighty powerful things. Can you say amen? And give me a hand clap of you. The scripture I want to zero in on, it says, And they limited the Holy One of Israel. The children of Israel, when God brought them out of Egypt after over 400 years of bondage, He performed plagues on Pharaoh and on the Egyptians. He opened the Red Sea for them and let them walk across on dry ground. He did so many mighty miracles. He flew in quail into the camp to feed millions of people. The rock followed them in the wilderness and it provided water for millions of people and their cattle and their animals. And the Bible says in the book of Romans, and this rock was Christ. And every day God provided for them. Man, they came in and they didn't know what to say it tasted like. And they asked, what does it taste like? It was angel food. Man at angel food. And he said, and some said it tastes like coriander. And some said it tastes like something else. It tasted just no one could put a handle on it. So they called it manna. And that word manna in the Hebrew meant, what is it? And I want you to know something. God can meet your need. Whatever it is this morning, God has manna from heaven to meet your need. Can you say amen in the mighty name of Jesus Christ? They didn't remember his power. They didn't remember his miracle working power. They didn't remember his delivering power. They didn't remember the mighty works of God. And sometimes we too can limit God by forgetting the miracles of the past. We can forget the, and the things that God has brought us out of and the things he's delivered us from and the healings in the past and limit God from working in the here and now and in the future. Can you say amen and give me my hand clap of praise in Jesus' name? They put limitations on God because of their unbelief. Many times you and I can limit God. And God has power to heal God has power to save is the most important thing. God has power to deliver the captive from addiction, from bondage, from fear, from any problem in their life. God has the power to set men free. For whom the Son is set free is free indeed. Can you say amen and give Jesus a But like the children of Israel, we limit God. They limited God. They forgot what he'd done, where they came from. And so many times I think we do that as well. Even as believers, we believe God can do this, but he can't do that. We believe God can heal the sick, but for someone else. How many knows what I'm talking about? We believe God can make a miracle for, for them, but not for me. God provided for them. We hear testimony. Many of us live off of such a hand experience. But God is a God that has no grandchildren, only sons and daughters, and he's no respecter of persons. And God's got a miracle with your name on it. Can you say amen in the mighty name of Jesus Christ? We doubt his willingness to help. We don't think God cares or that God is going to come down from his 
mighty throne and make a way for you and I. We don't remember his miracles or his power. And some of us forget, listen, all the way back in the Old Testament, Malachi 3, 6. I am the Lord thy God, I change not. Let me tell you, Psalms 103, he healed the people in the Old Testament. He said, I am the Lord thy God that healeth all thy diseases. And let me tell you something, he's the same Hebrews 13 and 8, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Give him a hand clap of praise in Jesus' name. A limitless God. Our lack of faith limits God. The ten spies with the bad report cost the children of Israel a great deal. Twelve spies were sent in to spy out the land. Ten come back with an evil report said there's giants in the land. We're not able to take it. We look like grasshoppers in their sight. And the two had a good report, Joshua and Caleb. But because of the ten spies with the bad report, the Israelites would march around the wilderness for 40 years and die in the desert. Because of unbelief. I want you to know number one. Psalms 103 and 3. God is a God of healing. He says in Psalms 103. I quoted it a minute ago. I am the Lord thy God. And I heal all thy diseases. Old Testament. Mark. Look with me. Mark 16. I want to refresh your memory in some of this stuff. And build your faith today. To receive God's miracle in your life. Mark 16 and 15. And Jesus said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth, preaching everywhere, and the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. I want you to know something. God was the healer in the Old Testament. He healed their diseases when they raised the serpent up on the staff. They were healed. That's why the doctor's symbol is the serpent on the staff. Because healing came when they raised up the serpent on the staff. Because God told them to do it in obedience to him. And just like he said in Psalms 103, I heal all my diseases. And we find here in Mark, he said, I go out and heal the sick, cast out devils. I want you to know, we've got power in the name of Jesus to heal the sick, to cast out devils, to set the captain free. Give me say The primary message in Christianity is the cross. The cross is the symbol of Christianity. The cross is the message of salvation. And if you're an evangelist or even pastor, we have to preach the cross when we feel we've got unsaved people. But we can't preach the cross every service. We can't preach salvation every service. There's more than that. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 27, Paul said, you know that I have declared unto you the whole counsel of God. There's more. And after we come to the cross, and after we accept Christ as our Savior, and after we have to walk this walk, we got to know how to walk. Come on. be victorious. Can you say amen? And give the Lord our hands on Hebrews 6 and 1. says this, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptism, of laying on of hands, of the resurrection of the dead, of eternal judgment, and this we will do if God permit there's more. Let me tell you. When you listen to me, Christ said, I am the door. The only way he said to the Father is through me. But now you've entered the door. And I want to know once you enter the door, that's just the entrance to the kingdom of God. There's much more. God wants you to walk in victory. God wants you to be well. God wants you to be healed. Can you say amen? And give him a head clap. I praise you. Peter's shadow 
trial in Acts 5 and 15. They stood in the street and they laid themselves down so that when Peter would come by, his shadow would heal the sick. Old Testament, Elijah was so anointed, they buried him in the grave. And they put a dead man in the grave next to him. And the dead man was resurrected from the anointing from Elijah's bones. Let me tell you something. We can carry the anointing. The Bible talks about the power of God working in us. Yes, some people have greater success and miracles and healings because they have more of the power of God working in them. We can blame it on the people and say they ain't got the faith and that's what some churches do. Cop out and try to blame the people and maybe they don't have the faith. But also, maybe the minister ain't got the faith. Maybe the minister ain't in the place where he needs to be to reach and touch heaven and see the sick healed and the captain set free. Can you say amen? We gotta be willing to pay the price. Amen. Paul's handkerchief. Legend says that Paul would preach, and after his preaching, his robe was so anointed, they would tear pieces off of his robe at the bottom. And they said, the Bible says he give handkerchiefs or aprons, it says, to the sick and to the demon possessed. And the demon possessed was set free by a piece of cloth. And the demon possessed was healed, or the sick was healed with a piece of cloth. Why? Was it that cloth? No. It was the transferable anointing. The Bible says, Behold, it shall come to pass that I shall send the anointing, and the anointing shall destroy the young. We need the anointing of God in our meetings to see the captain set free and see so tired of hearing dead sermons preached to dead congregations. We serve a living God. Give him a hand clap of praise. You know, I heard a guy, an atheist, hollering at a Christian. He said, hey, Christian, you don't believe that garbage in that word, in that book. He said, you don't believe that stuff that a whale Swallowed Jonah, do you? And the devout Christian looked at him and said, I want to tell you something, Mr. Atheist. If that book would have said Jonah swallowed the whale, I would have believed it. Can you say amen? I believe this book from cover to cover. If he says he can heal, if he says he can set the captive free, if he says he can deliver, if he says he can supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, I believe it. Give him a head clap and give the devil a black eye. I've preached to hundreds, even thousands of people. Preach the cross, preach salvation. They see the minister has to preach the whole counsel of God. It's more than one thing. It's the cross, it's repentance, it's consecration. It's all of different things that gives a Christian a good balance in their life. But I've preached to thousands, I don't care to say, and only see a few get saved. And if I lay hands on thousands of people and only a few get healed, why would I quit? Because I preach to thousands on salvation and only a few get saved. Everybody might not get healed at that moment. Let me tell you, the one man sat by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. One, that woman had the issue of blood for 12 years. I believe you can get healed this morning. One touch and God can heal you and raise you up. But I'm not going to quit believing for you until I make heaven my home. I'm standing on the promises of God. Can you say amen? And give me my hand clap. I praise you. I like how Bert Hare put it. Pastor Hare. Mom reminded me of it the other day. He said, if I got a prayer line and the person I'm praying for dies... I'll step over them and pray for the next one because nothing's changed. Can you say amen? He still said he could heal. And I don't care about your loved one that the devil will write them off and say they're too far gone and tell you they're never going to get saved and tell you that they're never going to turn around and try to convince you that they're a reprobate. But the Bible said he's in with the same up to the uttermost. Can you say amen? And give me my hands up. I'll praise you. We can 
can still lay hands on the sick. They did it and Jesus did it. The apostles did it. Paul laid hands on the sick many years after Christ's ascension. All through history, even till now, we've seen miracles with our own eyes. We look and see, uh, read the book about ever-increasing faith with Smith Wigglesworth, the miracles in his ministry. Jack Cole and all the great tent preachers, Brother Shambach, the healings, seen him in his meetings. We look and see through history our own people that we know. Look at Reinhard Bunke, the dead was raised before thousands of people in Africa. The man was dead for four days. God can still raise the dead. How many believes he's still God? Come on, give him a hand clap if you believe that. Hallelujah. I believe him with all my heart. How can we believe the same text which is the great commission that to go into all the world and preach the gospel and don't believe the very next verses that say heal the sick, cast out devils, speak in new tongues. It's all in the same context and it's all part of the package. We've got the power in the name of Jesus Christ and God's going to turn it around. Give me my hand up. Secondly, we limit God in the area of miracles. We think miracles, not just healings, but there's many types of miracles, is only for Bible times. I'm going to make you tell you a true story. Me and my boys had did a job, and it was a big job, and they owed us a lot of money. We got half the money, fortunately, and uh, it was a, a big hotel, and when we got done, the money, our money, was not given to us. It was supposed to be given to us in a week or two, and month went by, so we just kept working. Thank God it wasn't happy thing, but we didn't get any profit for a week's work. And so I, we pretty much gave up on it. We didn't think, well, maybe they're not going to pay us. You know, people do that, you know. So anyway, I was in a meeting one day, and uh, Mazzelli, is that her name? Mazzelli. Mazzelli, you know, some of you know Mazzelli, so if you ever have any doubts about Mazzelli, I'll tell you a little story. In case you want her to pray for me, you might want her to pray for me. But... She came up to me, and I never talked to Mazella on the phone or otherwise, but just when she'd come visit her and her mother, I know her father, he's with the Lord now. She wrote on a piece of paper, and we were owed $50,000. And she wrote on a piece of paper, 50K coming your way. I said, God's on the So I said, 50K, how would she know that? So I said to Debbie, look with Mazella handed me at the meeting, 50K coming our way. Monday morning, I went to the mailbox and the check was there. He said, amen. I want to say, God is a miracle working God. He doesn't change. God knows your needs this morning. God knows what you're going through this morning. God is able to meet your needs this morning. I don't know if it may be financial or if it may be physical or maybe you got a loved one being saved. Whatever it is, don't give up. Our God's got the devil on a piece of string and our God is able and he does all things well. Give me my head up. I praise in Jesus' name. God is alive and well and he does all things. Listen to me. Sometimes we want to put God in a box. God can do it, but he has to do it this way. God can heal, but he's got to heal this way. God can move in his spirit, but he got to do it my way. I have a way, he, God, you got to, I boxed you in, you got to do it this way. If you look in the Bible, and you ask all the people that receive miracles from the Lord, how do you get the miracle? What is the formula? The one man would say, well, here's what you got to do. You got to go get Jesus. He's got to take some clay and he's got to spit on the clay and make sure he spits on it. Then he's got to mix it up. Then he's got to put it on your eyes. And then you're going to be healed. And you ask another one, how did you get healed? Well, he just laid hands on me and I was healed. And if you ask the woman with the issue of blood, you got to crawl up there on your knees and get a hold and touch the hem of his garment. That's how you're going to get it. My point is, God don't work the way we say he wants to work. He's God. He does it the way he wants to do it, when he wants to do it, how he wants to do it. He's God. Give me my hands up. I praise you, Jesus. I told you, God bless David Jones. Johnny 
Terry walked in braces his whole life. His nickname was John the Leg. One meeting, Davy looked at Johnny Barry. He said, Johnny, you want to be healed? He said, yes, I do. Davy laid hands, said a simple prayer. Johnny unlocked the braces. He never walked on his legs in life. He put Davy on his back and ran him all over the campground. He's healed to this day. Can you say amen? Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I was with Billy McKenzie when a girl walked up in England. She said, you don't remember me, Billy. He said, I remember you. He said, you're the girl with the withered hand. She had a withered hand. She said, look, Billy, still healed. Hallelujah. God's a miracle working God. There's nothing too hard for God. 